الله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فهو المهتد ومن يضل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا الحمد لله الذي لم يتخذ ولدا ولم يكن له شريك في الملك ولم يكن له ولي من الذل والله أكبر كبيرا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله الأحد الفرم الصمد الذي لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد مالك الملك يؤتي الملك من يشاء وينزع الملك ممن يشاء يعز من يشاء ويذل من يشاء بيده خير وهو على كل شيء قدير سبح له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض وهو العزيز الحكيم له ملك السماوات والأرض يحيي ويميت وهو على كل شيء قدير هو الأول والآخر والظاهر والباطن وهو بكل شيء عليم وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة وجاهد في الله حق جهاده حتى أتاه اليقين تركنا على المحجة الضيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك شرح الله له صدره ووضع عنه وزره وأعلمه أن مع العسر يسرا أن مع العسر يسرا وأمره أن إذا فرقت فانصب وإلى ربك فرق عباد الله أوصيكم ونفسي مقصرة بتقوى الله وأحذركم ونفسي من عصيانه ومخالفة أمره لزوما لقوله الحق تبارك وتعالى في كتابه الكريم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون وكذلك في قول الحق تبارك وتعالى يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم وما يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما My dear brothers and sisters My today's khutbah is around a question that comes always to our mind in difficult times What did I do? Am I being punished by the mighty Allah Azza wa Jal for the difficulties I'm going through? We heard about the flooding that is taking place in certain parts of the world and the hurricanes that have had also parts of our country. And we wonder why, how, all the questions, all these questions come to our mind and they're very common and they're healthy way of manifesting our cognitive abilities. Because Allah has really created us as being beings with cognitive abilities. And we tend to rationalize everything in our life. And this is something, as I said, healthy. Because guilt could be a defense mechanism to help us understand and cope and deal with challenges that arises in our life. But at the same time, we could be developing irrational thoughts that could cause pain to us psychologically and could be manifested also physically in our life. So allow me today to explain, explain what's the concept of ibtila in our life and what are the reasons and the logic behind ibtila. Ibtila definitely could be a punishment from the mighty Allah Azza wa Jal, but it is a punishment to those who are tugha. أَلَمْ تَرَ كَيْفَ فَعَلَ رَبُّكَ بِعَامٍ إِرَمَ ذَاتِ الْعِمَانِ أَلَّتِي لَمْ يُخْلَقْ مِثْلُهَا فِي الْبِلَادِ وَثَمُودَ الَّذِينَ جَابُوا الصَّخْرَ بِالْوَادِ وَفِرْعَوْنَ ذِي الْأَوْتَادِ الَّذِينَ طَغَوْا فِي الْبِلَادِ فَأَكْثَرُوا فِيهَا الْفَسَادِ فَصَبَّ عَلَيْهِمْ رَبُّكَ صَلَّى عَلَيْهِمْ فِرْعَوْنُ was not punished for the night. 
there were continuous trials and attempts from Musa alayhi salam to guide him and to show him the right path. He continued to violate a violation after violation until the time come when Allah Azza wa had given up on him and then after that the punishment severely befall unto him. Ibtila also could be a, 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 a tool that the mighty Allah Azza wa sent to us to make us reflect and contemplate. To make us think, why are we going through this? Allah says clearly in Surah al rum that mischief has appeared in the, in the earth and the, and, and, the, and the land. That's what we're seeing nowadays. We're seeing so much changes in the global weather. And we're wondering, why? What is happening? And there are calls saying that this is as a result of what our hands have done, achieved. So the same is to be said in our actions in our life. If you are going through a difficulty in your life, don't be adamant. Don't live in denial. Take this as a chance of reflection between you and Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal. No one is going to be able to tell you what is it that you have done or what is if this is a punishment from Allah or if this is a message of wording from the mighty Allah Azza wa Jal. You and only you can do that. That's why Allah Azza give you these incentives and as I call them minah rabbaniya, gifts from the mighty Allah Azza wa Jal so that you can stand between the hands of the mighty Allah Azza wa Jal in the darkness of the night and reflect and contemplate. How far are you from the right path? Am I drifting? Am I going in a wrong direction? How good I am with my salah? How good I am with my practicing in my life as a Muslim? Am I fooling myself and fooling other around me, others around me? That's a question that you only are able to answer. No one else will be able to answer it for you. So a test could be something that Allah Azza would be sending to you a difficulty to shake you, to wake you up. As it happened with the Qawm of Yunus alayhi salam, when the calamity was about to befall to them, they went down on their knees and supplicated to the mighty Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah to lift the calamities away from them. Take this as a chance for you to reflect and contemplate on what is between you and the mighty Allah Azza wa Jal. Tests, difficulties, challenges are also tools from the mighty Allah Azza wa Jal to cleanse us and purify us from whatever, whatever, whatever we have accomplished and done wrong in our life. وما أصابكم من مصيبة وما أصابكم من مصيبة فبما كسبت أيديكم ويعفو عن كثير. And as the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم indicated, ما يصيب المؤمن من هم ولا غم ولا نصب ولا وصب حتى الشوكة يشاكها إلا كتب له بها أجرا. Nothing befalls unto the believer of pain physically, psychologically. Even the little throne that poke your finger, except you will be getting rewarded for it. And لا يزال المؤمن لا يزال البلاء بالمؤمن والمؤمنة في نفسه وولده وماله حتى يلقى الله وما عليه من خطيئة. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم indicated لا يزال البلاء difficulties continues to be falling unto mu'min and mu'mina, male and female believers, until fi nafsi, in his own body, in his own nafs, wa waladihi, and in his own children, wa malihi, and his own will, hatta yalqa Allah, until he, we meet, he or she will be meeting the mighty Allah Azza wa Jal, wa ma alayhi min khati'ah, until he would meet the mighty Allah Azza with pure, without any sins that would be held, would be uh, uh, subjugating him to torment in the hereafter. 
ما يصيب المؤمن من هم ولا غضب ولا نصب حتى الشوكة يشاكها إلا كتب به له بها أجرا. And the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم also indicated إذا أراد الله بعبد خير عجل له عجل له العقوبة في الدنيا في الدنيا. If Allah عز وجل wants the best for the servant in this life. He would hasten for him the punishment in this dunya. And quite the opposite. If Allah Azza does not want the good for the servant, in the akhirah, he would be withholding from him his sins, the punishment for his sins in this dunya, and he would be subjugated for them in the hereafter. So, number three, yes, difficulties, pains, and challenges, whatever we encounter within our in ourselves, psychologically, physically, whatever we see happening to our own children, our own families, is indeed from Allah Azza wa Jal to also purify us, to help us reevaluate things and go back to Him and try to become much closer to Him and more on the straight path and avoid going in vain or astray or in the wrong path. Number four, difficulties could be a sign of love from the mighty Allah Azza wa Jal. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, إِذَا أَحَبَّ اللَّهُ قَوْمًا If Allah loves certain people, إِبْتَلَاهُمْ فَمَنْ صَبَرَ فَلَهُ الصَّبْرُ وَمَنْ جَزَعَ فَلَهُ الْجَزَعُ Allah, if He loves certain people. As we're seeing right now, the Muslim Ummah is going through a lot of difficulties and challenges. As we, as a community living in Western societies, are also subjugated to Islamophobia. As we're going through so much in our life, let's be mindful that Allah Azza wa from His Rahmah, if He loves certain individuals, certain people, He would test them. فَمَنْ صَبَرَ فَلَهُ الصَّبْرُ Whoever seek exercise patience and seek refuge by Allah Azza wa then He will be getting rewarded for it. And whoever does not exercise the concept of sabr and be patient, then it is a physical pain or emotional pain, and there is no reward for it for you in the hereafter. And number five, it could be that Allah Azzawajal, the Mighty wants a status for you. You've been praying to the Mighty Allah Azzawajal, for the Firdausul Alam and Jannah. You've been praying to the mighty Allah Azza to give you the company of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You've been praying for things of good in the dunya and in the akhirah. And your deeds are not enough to help you be able to get them. As the report from Musa Alayhi Salam, that one of his followers, one of the kind, conscience, pious followers of Musa Alayhi Salam was going through severe, severe difficulty. And Musa Alayhi Salam supplicated to the mighty Allah Azza Oh, Ya Allah, he's one of my followers. He's very conscious. He's, he's muttaqi. And Allah has to back to Musa alayhi salam that, Ya Musa, he's been asking for a status in Al-Jannah that his own deeds are not enough for him to be able to make it. Therefore, I have given him the tests in his life to help him be elevated and supplemented and rise in his status in Al-Jannah. And as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam Indicated in the Rajal and the Rajula, Layakun Lahu Manzilla and in the Lahi, Fama Yabluho Habi Amalihi, Fala Yazal Lahu Yabtadihi Bima Yakra. A person has a status in Allah as the Jalta scales in the hereafter, and his own actions and deeds would not qualify him to be able to reach it. And then the mighty Allah as the Jal will continue to test him Bima Yakra. And this is an important concept that we need to be mindful about. The test does not come to you with an abundance of wealth. Test doesn't come to you with the things you love, but rather with the things that you do not love. That the things would make your life difficult. The things will tighten things onto you until Allah Azza wa Jal until He will reach that status that Allah Azza wa Jal will be giving to you. إنما يوفى الصابرون أجرهم بغير حساب. But the question comes here again. How would I know if my test, if my difficulty is a punishment, or it is a sign 
Is it or is it a purification? Or is it a sign of love from the mighty Allah Azza wa Jal? Abdul Qadr al Jilani indicates that if you are being tested and you are in jaza and hala, in al insana, huli qahadu'a, ida masahu sharp jazu'a wa ida masahu khayru manu'a. If you are agitated, if you are uh, going around complaining and talking too much, I am going through this, I am uh, incontent, I'm not satisfied, why is this happening to me, what I have done in my life, then know that this ibtila that befalls unto you is ibtila of niqma wa billah. Train yourself, and maybe it is a status of, of, of elevation that we need to train ourselves to from one stage to another stage as we rise in our ibadat we also want to, ri want to rise in the way we exercise patience in our life in, for difficulties that come from Allah Azza wa Jalla. and if you feel that you are being tested but you're holding your jawah from exposing the, the difficulties you're encountering in your life. You feel the contentment. You feel that, that, yes, I am indeed going through difficulty, but what's the point of talking to people around me and complaining? When you talk to people who are advising you and giving you counseling, it's different than when you talk and complain about Allah's qadr unto you. So when you feel that you are accepting as the Prophet ﷺ said that if my servant, if a, if a baby or a child dies and the parents would be saying from the heart, Alhamdulillah, he would be asking the Malaika and he knows best, what did my servant say? And the Malaika would be saying, they said, Alhamdulillah. And he would be saying to them, Ibnu lahum qasrul hamd fil jannah. Build for them the palace of Alhamd in al jannah. And the highest stage that I think it requires from us a lot of efforts to train ourselves to reach that status, which is when you feel that the ibtila is a supplementation to you in your status of the akhirah. That would be when you enjoy the pain you're enduring as a result of the difficulty. When a woman tripled off, fell, fell off, and she hurt her finger. She was bleeding, but she was smiling. And people around her were saying to her, you are bleeding, you hurt yourself, and you're smiling. She said, halawatu ajrihi an satni mararatu alamihi. The sweetness of the joy of being with Allah Azzajal made me forget the pain that I'm experiencing as a result of my injury. وَالَّذِينَ صَبُرُوا ابْتِغَاءَ وَجْهِ رَبِّهِمْ وَأَقَامُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَأَنْفَقُوا مَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ سِرًّا وَعَلَانِيَةً وَيَدْرَؤُونَ بِالْحَسَنَةِ السَّيِّئَةِ أُولَٰئِكَ لَهُ عُقْبَ الدَّارِ جَنَّاتُ عَدْنٍ يَدْخُلُونَهُ وَمَنْ صَلَحَ مِنْ آبَائِهِمْ وَأَزْوَاجِهِمْ وَذُرِّيَّاتِهِمْ وَالْمَلَائِكَةُ يَدْخُلُونَ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنْ كُلِّ بَابٍ سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكُمْ بِمَا صَبَرْتُمْ فَنِعْمَةٌ May Allah make us one day, Ya Rabbi Allah. Wa qul qawmi hadha astaghfirullah wa qul astaghfirullah wa qul astaghfirullah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Nahmaduhu wa nasta'inu 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 wa إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم وبارك اللهم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم إن عبيدك أبناء عبيدك أبناء إمائك نواصين يا رب بيدك ماض يا رب فينا حكمك عدن فينا قضاءك نسألك اللهم بكل اسم ولك سميت به نفسك أنزلته في كتابك أو علمته أحدا من خلقك أو استأثرت به في علم الغيب عندك بأن تجعل القرآن العظيم ربي عبده يا رب اللهم اجعله جلاء لهمومنا وأحزاننا يا رحمة وعلمنا 
اللهم يا رب السماوات والارض ورب العرش العظيم نسالك بان تشفي كل مريض اللهم نسالك برحمتك ان ترحم كل ميت اللهم ارفع مقتك وغضبك عنا اللهم اقر اعيننا بالصلاه في المسجد الاقصى امنين مطمئنين فانك على كل شيء قدير ربي اوسعنا نشكر نعمتك التي انعمت علي وعلى والدي يا رب وان اعمل صالحا ترضاه واصلح لي في ذريتي اني تبت اليك وانني من المسلمين ربي هب لي حكما والحقني بالصالحين واجعل لي لسان ذكر في الاخرين واجعلني من ورثة جنة النعيم واغفر لوالدي وارحمهما كما ربياني صغيرا ولا تخزني يوم يبعثون يوم لا ينفع مال ولا بنون واجعلني يا رب مما ياتيك بقلب سليم وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين وقم الصلاه